So, uh, Gary V, my you know my favorite entrepreneur, um, he uh, he says you know he never has people sign um, non competes or NDAs or anything like this uh, because he'll give you know seventeen ideas in a meeting or uh, in in you know um, online or whatever, um, but he wants to see you know anyone actually execute. So you know he doesn't care the idea. He's a, if you're a creative person, you're just gonna keep creating. So it doesn't matter if people copy off, off of you. It doesn't matter if people take your ideas. It doesn't matter. You know in Hollywood they're very you know, uptight about this. Very you know everyone's all um, you know because everybody steals each other's ideas. Um, <clears throat> so everybody's all you know, up in arms about this. Uh, and it's very this is the old era that we came from. In, in this new era. I mean, you, there, you, there's a million ideas, and they're all, they're basically all in the ether. I actually think Elizabeth Gilbert, that eat, pray, love lady, um, who's, you know, she has an interesting arc. Who would have thought she went from, like, you know, a Hampton's housewife to where she is now? I mean, she's, she's an interesting lady. Um, she says, she wrote that book about creativity. And she says, the muse comes to you, it knocks on your door, and if you don't answer the door, it leaves. And it goes on, it knocks on somebody else's door. And I, when I first heard that, I, I didn't know how I felt about that. I thought, I don't, not, I don't know. Like, I, 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 it was thought provoking. But um, in the years since, I, I actually tend to agree with her. These things want to come through, and they're looking for a, not even an appropriate vehicle, just something. Just like the souls that are, you know, okay, the, this is why your parents freaked out when you arrived. Because, it, you know, basically you were looking for like the highest frequency human to jump into so you could come and be incarnate during this time. And that may have been, um, you know, they may not have been the most stable people in the world. They may not have been the most, you know, the, you're just looking for, for some vehicle to get in on. That's basically the deal. And uh, when a high soul hits a, a human, um, a lot of the a lot of you've never been to the planet Earth before, but definitely these this new generation, you know, they've come from far, far, far away. Um, so that's why you have to explain to them how planet Earth works, and you know, you have to actually talk to them about it because they they don't know. You know, sometimes you know how sometimes you see people like I remember I was standing behind somebody um, who was ordering. You know, we were like at a Starbucks or something, and they were there was two people, and they were like they were discussing like really intently like milk. Like, okay, so we'll order it with milk. Uh, what, uh, milk? Where does milk come from? Like, they were having, and I was like, oh, these are aliens in front of me. Uh, and then they were like, when they got to the front, they were like, we will take the Vendee, you know, whatever it's called. They were like so nervous about ordering the Starbucks. And I was like, it's okay. Um, they were like, we will have the Vendee macchiato latte non-fat. Like, it was so funny. Um, and you see that a lot. I mean, <clears throat> this is why this whole idea of, um, what's that word they use within the alien culture? Uh, um, starts with a D. What? Oh, no, Joanna's just talking about something else. Um, Joanna's just working, don't worry. Um, it's, uh, it's called, like, basically, there's, there's a term that they use in the alien culture, like, when everyone's going to know. Does anybody know this word? It starts with a D. It's like... Um, Disclosure, thank you, yeah, disclosure. It, the idea of disclosure is hilarious because if you don't understand what's happening on this planet, then, I mean, no disclosure is gonna help because people believe what they believe. So it, it doesn't, disclosure is kind of, uh, there, there's no, it doesn't, disclosure doesn't matter, basically. Um, there's some guy on, on social media who's trying to get um, some, I guess they're gonna storm Area 51, um, and there's been all these memes made about it, like, um, you know, can't wait till I meet my alien half brother, um, and all this kind of stuff is kind of funny. But disclosure doesn't matter at all because you know the 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 thing you either understand what's going on planet Earth or you know you have your own ideas, which is fine. Um, everybody can have their own ideas. Um, how did I get here? Okay, so um, <laughs> so the the muse it, it comes you know it wants to come through, and it's trying to find some not even able bodied. Just anybody. 
this energy has to come onto the planet and it has to come fast. So, it, 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 you know, part of what we're doing as yogis and as, as the kind of thought leaders and on the, uh, on the avant-garde, what we're doing is we're just, we're opening ourselves to, even if we're not quite capable of the task at hand, we, or at least we don't think we are, or even if we don't think we have the resources, or even if we're not sure how to do it, we're opening ourselves so that the, the, the energy and the ideas and the, and the possibilities and the potentialities, they start to come through us. And the question then is not the idea itself, can you, can you execute it? And then, and then on top of it, once you execute it, can you handle it? Because most people, you know, I, I, I mean, we got five emails last week, people asking us to take over their yoga centers. I'm like, you know, we're not, we're not stupid around here. We don't want to, yoga centers are not a good idea. Um, you know, because people can't, they, 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 they may be able to open the thing, or they may have thought they had some like pie in the sky idea about oh, a yoga center. I mean, these things have a turnover rate of uh, the same as restaurants. It's like 95th percentile yoga centers, especially now everybody, you know, who wants to come to a yoga center when you just work out online? You know, I've never talked to anybody ever. Um, and so, but, but, you know, so these, it, so it's not about executing it. It's then about how do you, how do you hold the thing? How can you, how can you um, actually, you know, sustain, maintain? Everything on this planet is about sustaining and maintain, maintaining. And, and then if you can execute some things, then, you know, you're going to be, that's going to give you some fulfillment. So Gary Vee's like, here's a 17 ideas. I have a really good idea that I've been talking about. Is, is Zoe from Wonder Workshop still here? No, she isn't. Did she have to leave? Because I, I, I could give her a million dollar idea right now. Green coffee. Green coffee. I was, we were drinking green coffee in um, Dubai with saffron and rose, and it was amazing. It makes you feel so good, and you don't get the, the hangover of, of the regular coffee. Um, and it's very metabol. It's like it, there's a lot of metabolism and antioxidants, all this kind of stuff. Somebody should be making this. The green coffee is the next thing. Nobody cares about reishi anymore. Green coffee is the next thing. So if somebody wants a million dollar idea, you could make an amazing, you know, powdered beverage. Um, that because what they do in the Middle East and, and know how maybe you know more about this than I do, but they were telling me in Dubai, and I think it's different in each country. Like what the like welcoming like the drink is. It, it, what is it in Egypt? Is there like a drink that you get when you come to someone's house? It's hibiscus. Okay. In in Saudi, is it green coffee? Yeah. It's the, yeah, yeah. So, I'm telling you, girl, this is a really good idea. Yeah. All right, well, we need to get this on the international market and make it really hot and, you know, do the whole thing. I mean, this is a million dollar idea. I'm, you know, we'll, we'll talk about my percentage later. Um, but so, uh, <laughs> but seriously, this is, this is a really good idea. But so, you know, you can have a million ideas, and, and if you're a creative person, see, there's two frequencies on the planet. There's the destructive frequency and the creative frequency. And the Aquarian person is, first of all, working as hard as they can to keep themselves on the creative frequency. There's no gray area here. So you should be really clear with yourself on that. If you're in a destructive frequency, you want to get yourself out of it as quickly as possible because there's not really a gray area. It's, it's either this or that because we live on a polarity planet. So, you know, we all get into our moments of, of self-destructiveness and, and that kind of thing. But your job as a yogi is to get yourself back on that creative frequency as quickly as possible. Then to get the velocity of the neurons so that the ideas that are coming and knocking at your door, you have the capacity to execute the ones that are, you know, uh, uh, you know, g give you a little something like you, you're ready, you, you want to do it. I mean, you, you got some choices. We're so lucky. There's, you know, myriad of things that you could execute on if you're on the creative frequency. So that's why creative people just keep creating and destructive people keep destroying. They destroy themselves, they destroy their families, they destroy their businesses, they destroy each other. That's, that's destructive people. Now, what we're dealing with right now on the kind of leadership of the planet is a bunch of people who had, who had mothers and fathers that you know, didn't like themselves and were very self-destructive. So they created children who are, are destructive. 
I mean, it's, it's that simple. That's why we get, you know, it's very important, this pregnancy thing, because we want to create a generation of children who are constructive uh, in their primary frequency. So, you know, as a yogi, your job is to get on that creative frequency and then, you know, get some whatever those ideas that are coming through you, see what you can execute, and then when you execute, you can hold it down. You can grow it. You can you can flourish with it. So it's not something that just is a flash in the pan. We don't want you to have a 15 minutes of fame. We want you to have a long-term life of creative impact. And that takes maintenance, it takes sustenance, it takes endurance, it takes strength. And so that's what I'd like to work on with you a little bit today. Because we got all this energy from you know, being together this weekend and all the things that have happened in the past you know, 10 days. Um, this, this really kind of uh, uh, powerful uh, liftoff that we've done here on Mallorca. And so um, now I want you to take all that energy and put that into the creative impact of your particular unique kind of situation, your particular unique aura, your, your unique kind of ability to uh, skill set. And when, when you really start to get the frequency up, a lot of new skills are going to come. Have you noticed that? Things that you never thought that maybe you were good at, all of a sudden, you, the, your, your new kind of abilities start to show up. Yogi Bhajan never spoke, not one time, to Hari Jeevan about playing the gong when he was alive. I'm sure he did a lot of since he's not been, but, um, but he, he, not one time. <clears throat> so, you know, this stuff starts to rise in you as some of the destructive tendencies leave. The, the, the stuff that is kind of innately or in incarnationally uh, your gifts or things that start to come online because certain aspects of the brain start to light up and that kind of thing, or the nervous system gets stronger. This is w what I want you to be alert to. And then, you know, you kind of know. It's like when something comes in that you possibly could, could uh, the muse knocks on your door and you're like, huh, I could do that. And then, these are the problems I want you to have. Then you're so creative and you have so much velocity, you got to be careful about what you're saying yes to. That's the problem I want you to have. Not, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of artists, and think about this. Think about all the artists that, that this is true for. We only got one song out of them. They had one hit or one painting or one, you know, I mean, there's a million celebrities that way. They had their 15 minutes, and a lot of them are really talented. I always use Lindsay Lohan in this. Um, um, some of you don't remember who she is, but she, she has a new, she had a, a, some reality thing that happened somewhat recently that was, I think, a pretty big fail. Um, but she was a very talented actor in her early movies. She's an American actress, um, a very talented actor, but the nervous system couldn't handle it. Now, of her generation, Paris Hilton was, is that same generation, Nicole Richie, same generation. Um, Nicole Richie, I think she's kind of gotten into like family stuff, but Paris Hilton, I just was at Girl Boss speaking with Paris Hilton, and I mean, girl's a billionaire. She shows up for like a 45 minute DJ set and gets paid like a million something dollars. I like that lady. I'm into her. Um, she really, and she, she basically single handedly created reality TV and the, and the whole culture. I mean, she was she paved the way for the Kardashians and everything else. Um, you, you may not look at her as a trailblazer, but she's, you know. She's an interesting, and she's been able to sustain a 22, 23 year career doing what? And now she's like getting on the wellness circuit. I think it's hilarious. Um, <clears throat> So, you know, but, but this is what we want for you. We want you to be able to utilize the kind of things that are coming through. And that, you know, the biggest problem is you don't know what, you know, you, you, you have to kind of sort what's worth your energy. That's the, that's the problem I want you to have. Whereas there's a lot of people, and some of you might know what I'm talking about in a, in a real experience. Maybe you did something big and then the, the fear comes in that you're not going to be able to repeat it or you're not going to be able to write that, that, that next song or do that next painting or do your next, you know, this happens for a lot of serial entrepreneurs. You know, you sell the company and now it's like, okay, I got it. I want to, want, want to, am I going to be able to do this again? 
That's a big fear that people have. So we want you to have kind of that, that if you get on this creative and energetic frequency, that will, that will never be a fear. Because the biggest problem you have is, I, there's so many ideas coming through me, I gotta be careful about what I put my energy towards. Can we get, can we get with that? That's a, that's, those are the problems we wanna have, okay? All right, that's my, that's my prayer for you. So we're gonna do a really cool meditation that uh, Yogi Bhajan gave for this, to give you this kind of creative longevity and the, the impact and the vision and the, the velocity to be able to uh, perform. All right, so give me a little cat cow. Thanks so much for listening to another lecture on reality riffing. These are conversations and topics that I think are very important to discuss. If you enjoyed, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and share with your friends and your family. If you also want to continue to listen, bigger lectures and uh, classes and other experiences are available on gurujugit.com. Thank you.